Hello everyone, it's certainly been a while. Uh, the date at which I'm recording this little segment is December 21st, 2022, which means it has been over two months since my last Terraria upload, which probably raises a couple questions about where I have been. Um, answers a couple things, I have been busy with school, family stuff, got braces, and got sick again. So that about covers it, which means it has really delayed me editing and publishing my last Terraria Melee series video. I did get another video up before then, but that was a whole lot simpler to make, and it was kind of a big project to finish off the finale, which means all the footage you're about to see in this video was from about two months ago. So yeah, I was still sick back then, which means my voice was not very good, so I apologize for that in advance, but I'm here right now, I'm better. After this video publishes, I'm probably going to get around to doing some more stuff now that my semester is over. So, once again, apologize that it's taken so long, but I'm here now, so enjoy the Terraria Melee Mask Mode finale. Alright, hello guys, welcome back to Terraria 1.4.4 Melee Master Mode Part 13. So, I'm a little bit sick currently, I don't know what it is, but my voice probably won't be the best today, so bear with me for that. But, um, last episode... We did a whole lot, we did all of Golem, we did all of Motion Madness, and all of Duke Fishon, and by our third sign here, the three things we have to do, maybe two, I'm not sure, Empress of Light we're for sure doing today, Old Ones Army Tier 3, we're 100% doing today, because we have pretty much everything we need for them, and Lunatic Cultist if we have time at the end, the next episode we can do Lunar Events and the Moon Lord. So, um, I do not have any Prismatic Lace Wings for Empress of Light. I also have not generally prepared for Empress of Light. I'm kind of just going in a mindset of like, you know, I'll, I'll I'll try it out and see how well I do. But what I would like is some asphalt because I happen to have a surplus somewhere around here. It's actually in my void bag. I'm pretty sure because there's no way I would have sold it. There's I would not even I would be that stupid. Uh, okay, yeah, it is in here. I just want to make sure of that uh, we don't care about this. Um, I did get a whole lot of weapons when I was farming for Duke Fishron. Not that we need them in this particular playthrough. I don't know if I actually have the Shroom Ring, but since we're collecting weapons, I might as well check. We do, okay, so we don't care about that. And also, we are back up to our previous counts of money. I'm at almost 25 Platinum, which is probably about the same I had like a couple episodes ago, and then I decided to throw it all away on something that didn't even matter. So we're not going to talk about that anymore. But we do have 1300 asphalt, and I'm gonna start making my arena today. Um, I believe only thing we need is campfires and holy lanterns. I'm pretty sure. So I don't. I also don't know how big to make the arena. Like that's not really. Empress of Light isn't really max expertise. I don't know if I said this previously, but I don't think I've actually ever fought Empress of Light in like a legitimate playthrough. So this could this could go one of two ways, but I'm hoping things are gonna be alright. I don't know exactly what to bring. I'm thinking what we could do is... Because the thing with Duke Fish on last time is... I put in one attempt with all my potions. I failed because it's been a long time since I fought him. So I'm thinking what could happen is... I could just go for a test attempt. And then see how that goes. See how I need to improve. And then bring in all my potions. Because the whole like um, flawless streak with bosses has kind of gone out the window. So... We're gonna go catch some prismatic lace wings. We're gonna go build up the arena, like improve it technically, because we do have something right here. Also, uh, the hollow has spread to this house right here, and it's probably gonna spread like down here at some point. So, we do have an arena right here. It's not in the best. It's not in the best shape. I would like to extend it to this tree and probably out a little bit more than it is currently, because Empress of Light. We're probably gonna need a lot of room. I don't know if we'll need like two platforms. I've never. I don't really see people doing that, so I'm just gonna go in with the with the standard setup, and we're gonna figure it out. Oh, and I do have I do have campfires and heart lanterns here already, so that's definitely good. But it doesn't matter because this whole thing is gonna be replaced with asphalt. I don't want to run on platforms. I don't want to risk it. So let's just deal with this, and then put on our asphalt, and we're good to go. If you're here looking for any like expert advice, like professional tips from me, like. You're not gonna find it with Empress of Light. I'm like an OG kind of guy. I played a lot in like 1.2, 1.3, probably even before that. So like, mech bosses and Plantera and stuff, I know how to do. Empress of Light, that's like, that's like new age Terraria. Like, I'm not, I'm not as experienced in this category. So, 
Like, I'm, I'm gonna be just as new as, like, probably newer than a whole lot of people watching this, so... D don't expect me to know exactly what I'm doing, because I won't. I don't actually know if Empress of Light, like, will despawn if I'm not in the hollow, because... A majority of this bridge is not even in the hollow, so, like... If we go over here, it just leaves the hollow, so... I'm hoping that's not gonna be a problem, I don't... I really don't think it's gonna, like, make or break the whole thing, but... I'm thinking when we reach a thousand left right now, I'm thinking that should be good enough. Is this long enough? I mean, this... You will run along this pretty quick. I don't know. Especially with Hexed Branch. I don't know if Asphalt actually helps with that. But, we're gonna be going up to like 81 miles per hour. And normal speed, we're gonna be like... I, I think this should be fine. I'll add like... I'll add like 50 more for safekeeping. Because, it's not like we're in dire need of materials for Asphalt. Like, we can we can even make like thousands more. So, I'm not worried about that. Okay, that should be fine. Like, I'm more worried about dodging. Because I don't know how to do that. Okay, I think we're about ready. I mean, I think we just, like, um, we just catch some of these things. I think they only spawn at night, if I'm not wrong. Because I know if you killed it, like, daytime, then that makes the super hard version. But I'm not trying to do that right now. I just want to, I want to get the starlight from it, and that's all I want. Like, I don't even want the wings. I don't want anything else. Like, if it drops other things, then that's great. I want the starlight, and then I'm gone. That's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, I forgot the hollow, like, stretches over to the other, to, like, the left of my house, so... I, I, I don't have to sit there only and look for these guys. It literally goes up this far. I didn't really, I kind of saw that coming, but, like, see, it goes all the way up to here. You guys would probably sell me a hollow pylon. I don't know what the pirate is doing over here, either. I don't know what any of these guys are doing here, actually. I had, like, the die trader here. I don't know what the hell happened to the pirate. Or maybe it's corrupted. Uh, this flareon is, like, the love of my life. I love this weapon. I don't even know if, like, in 1.4.4, I don't even know if it's that good anymore, but I know they buffed it, and I know it was always good. So, like, I, I, I just, it's just, like, possessed hatchet, but, like, ten times better. Like, it fires out, like, 15 possessed hatchets, and they all home in. It's like, it's so good. I love this thing. If I didn't make it, like, clear enough already. Okay, I've been searching for, like, a long time, and I haven't found a single one, so... Do they even spawn, like, during the night? Am I just completely flipping it around? You know, I'm, I'm gonna look it up. I feel like this is something I should probably know. Okay, so apparently it's from dusk until midnight, and it just turned midnight. Oh, wait, no, don't kill it, don't kill it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, um, we're doing this now, I guess. Oh, shit. Okay, guys, um, I didn't really expect this to happen. I probably should have, though. Okay, uh, we're fighting it now. I accidentally killed it. Shit, get out of the way. Okay, wait. Can you, can you do your stuff? Can I get out of the way? Okay, get on the bridge. I'm not ready for this. Oh, God, I'm not. That did, like, 500 damage. Alright, flare on go, flare on go. This boss is too quick. Flare on isn't even fast enough for it. Oh my god. Okay, well, I know what I'm getting myself into then. Jesus. I mean, it's a... Damn, it's a cool fight, but like, I'm so screwed. Alright. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Here we go, back to it. Oh, I'm so... Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe I should have used the bug net before I started, like, flailing this thing around. I'm gonna bring some basic potions. I managed to get three, um, prismatic lace wings during one night. They're actually harder to come across than I expected, but, um, we should be alright with these. I'm not expecting to, like, beat it. I mean, I could beat it, but my main goal isn't to beat it at this current moment. My main goal is to, like, learn the fight. So, if we can do that, that is the best thing we can do. So... I really, this flare on wasn't really working, because I feel like Empress of Light is just too fast, and the flare on takes a while for, like, the bubbles to come out, like, if we run like this, it takes, like, a good second or two for the bubbles to actually come out, and the Empress of Light is always moving around, like, really quickly, so, I don't think that's the best course of action, I don't think, Possessed Hatchet could be good, because it's a lot quicker, I know I just said flare on was, like, ten times better than Possessed Hatchet, but, this is a lot better for, like, fast moving targets, probably. Um, Scourge of Corruptor couldn't be bad either. 
I'm gonna put away the ones I'm probably not going to use during the fight. I will keep out these four, because these are probably the ones that are gonna be the best. Um, I'll, I'll cycle between the two of them, or between the four of them. I'm thinking North Pole might actually be the best, because while we're running, we can just do this, and that just, like, fires a ton of stuff. And all these snowflakes do a lot of damage, so. I think we'll start off with that. If it doesn't work, I'll switch to Possessed Hatchet. If that works, then I'll probably give these other things a shot, but we're going to learn the fight. We're going to learn how to dodge better. That's my main kind of goal here. Alright, here we go. I think we are about ready. Take this out. Break it. There we go. Alright. Start off the North Pole, as I said. Get our buffs out. And we'll just give this a general shot. We'll see how it goes. Not expecting the world, but I do want to try out this weapon in particular. It does seem like it's doing some pretty good damage, so... And also, watch out for the dash, because the dash, I'm pretty sure, is like the most lethal thing. So my main problem with the North Pole is not not really what it's doing, it's just like, it's not hitting Empress a lot of the time. Like, damage is kind of hard to come by, so... I'm going to try Possessed Hatchet, because I feel like that might be one of the better options for this. Just because if we can stay barely out of its reach, then the Possessed Hatchet will hit it anyway. So, yeah, this seems like... It's not like a super high damage dealer, but it definitely is getting the job done. And of course she does have a ton of health, so this is going to be a battle of endurance. The dash I keep getting hit by, I gotta learn how to do that better. But it seems like all of her other attacks I'm getting pretty good at. It's just the dash is like number one priority for dodging. I see, I keep getting hit by it because there's like, there's so many little effects on the dash that I can't tell where she actually is. Oh god. Yeah, see that's difficult. This is not too bad. It's just the dash, I gotta get out of the way of that, that is number one priority. It seems like Possessed Hatchet is doing a great job at wearing her down. I'm a little bit worried about Phase 2, because I don't know as much what that entails, so we're going to figure that out in a couple seconds. I got to get around the other side of the arena. Oh, geez. Okay, I got a health potion, though. Going to take a bit of damage here, but that's okay. Oh, God. That's right, fine. Phase 2 time. I'm going to try Scourge of the Corruptor. I'm not sure if that is the best course of action, but, yeah, see, it's a little hard to actually find out where she is. I think homing is definitely where it's going to be at here. Uh, possessed Hatchet, let's just keep with that. Possessed Hatchet is definitely the way to go. Ooh, Sundance, get out of the way of that. That last few, I feel like that lasted longer than before. Gotta get out of the way of these. Oh, shoot. It's not going bad, but this can, this can change at the flip of a switch, as I feel like it's about to. Okay. We're definitely doing alright, and it's definitely going well. I'm not going to say anything, because... As I just said, it can change on the flip of a coin. So attacks are definitely getting crazier. Oh, don't get hit by that. That can be bad. Also, don't get hit by these little spinny things. Out of the way of that. I need to get to the other side of the arena. So this hatchet is barely out of her reach. Which, I need to stay a little bit closer to her. So we really want this damage. That's why I chose the beetle scale mail. Oh, dear. Okay, she's close, but we haven't won yet. Definitely have not won yet. Gotta keep... Don't celebrate too early, because that's something I often do. Perfect, perfect. Don't get hit by that. Oh, Hex Branch, go, 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 go. Alright, that wasn't good, but that's okay. She is nearly dead. I think we may have this one. Does this have to do your work, do your work, do your work. Let's... No, oh, there we go, we did it. Oh my gosh. Okay, that was not that was not terrible. I was expecting that to be the hardest thing in the world. Okay, we didn't get the starlight. That's okay. Um, that was not terrible. I'm actually gonna go for round two because that was not the hardest thing if in the world. All this stuff has really high damage, so... Okay. I feel like it's better, honestly, to... No, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. See, I just told you, it can all change in an in instant. Oh my god! That was close. I told you guys, it can all change in, like, three seconds. These things are high damage, and I'm not doing the best job dodging. But she's almost dead. Come on, come on, come on, come on, take her out, take her out, take her out. Nah, nice. Okay, that is difficult. That is difficult, though. Starlight? Uh, kaleidoscope? No. So, we can keep this up. 
Oh, uh, we do not have time for another attempt. We're not doing this during the daytime. That is not me. I'm not that guy. But we did Empress of Light, and we got the Swing Insignia, which is interesting because I don't know if it's actually something I want to use. Because I always, like, I always talk about it, but there's all this stuff that's, like, really vital. Like, I don't think I could get by with it without any of this stuff. Like, it gives me, if you don't know, it gives you infinite wing flight. So, like, I can just keep going up forever and ever. Which, I don't think I need that for Empress of Light. But Moonlord is something that is definitely good for because when you're fighting Moonlord, if you're caught like when you like when your wings are falling and like the um, beam is coming by, like that that's when you often die. So I might equip that during Moonlord. I'm not sure though. I wouldn't put my money on it all yet. After fighting both Duke Fishon and Empress of Light, I can't actually say which one is more difficult. I think they are very close. I think the Duke Fishon buff definitely helped bring them closer. But I'm not entirely sure which one is harder. I definitely struggle a lot with both of them. I think I died more to Duke Fish Run, but I think his patterns were easier to get used to once I did once I did it a lot. Empress of Light is definitely more complex, but you can definitely get in a good rhythm. And I feel like they both have very high damaging things, but I feel like Duke Fish Run especially. It's probably like the exact same damage they have, but I feel like Duke Fish Run especially. Yeah, see, she has more attack, but I feel like Duke Fishron, if you, especially in, like, Phase 3, if you get hit by, like, one of his dashes, it's, like, game over. But, like, Empress of Light, if you get hit, you can tank some hits from her projectiles. I mean, it's, like, her dash is equivalent to, like, his charge. So, it, it, I think it's very similar, the two of them, but definitely two very good challenges. I probably should get a, another Prismatic Lacing right now, but it's okay. Um, release that, kill that, buff up, and here we go again. So, I'm gonna stick to Zest Hatchet. That's kind of just what I know best. And I'm not trying to show off with all kinds of different stuff. I'm trying to win, so. As I, sa I say as I instantly get out something else. This is going much smoother. The rhythm of this fight is going a whole lot better. I'm understanding the attacks a whole lot more. Uh, yeah, I, sh I shouldn't speak. I shouldn't speak. Oh my god, I shouldn't speak. Jesus Christ. I was doing so well, and the instant I start talking, I start screwing everything up. And I almost just died. Oh my god, okay. Yeah, let's maybe shut up for the rest of this. Oh god, I thought, it was I thought she was gonna go up. Oh god. Oh no, 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 no. Please, 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 please. Please, no. Oh god, that was so close. I have 30 seconds. I really need to dodge well here. I need to dodge really well. I don't know if I'm capable. I need speed. Speed is key. Speed is of utmost key. Oh my god, she's so low. I can't lose, right? I can't lose. There's no way. Nice. That got so close to the end there. I should have never talked. And of course not. Ooh, prismatic lace spring. I saw that. I saw that. Kill you. Die, 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 die. Nice. Alright. So I don't know where my arena is, but I managed to find one right at the death of midnight, so I really need to find my arena. That's probably key here. And there's a sandstorm. Oh, I am far. I am far. Okay. We need to drive the hell out of here. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Up, 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 up. Oh, God. Risk it. Risk the damage. Risk the damage. Get the fuck out. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh man. I... I wanted to risk one hit instead of taking like 500. I had the right idea, but it didn't end up working out. Oh shit! Thank god I have the fish on wings. They're actually saving my ass. I need all this flight time. Because I keep trying to fly to get away from this stuff, but it just keeps following me up and up and up. No! My voice is getting destroyed by all this, all this talking I'm doing. I probably shouldn't be recording like an hour long episode. In one 7.30 to 12 o'clock period, I managed to get nine of these things. I don't know how I did it. I don't know what was so difficult before, but these things are easy to find. So, I guess now all I gotta do is, you know, get my potions back and then do this all over and over again. If I somehow cannot kill, if I somehow cannot get the starlight in nine Empress of Lights, I'm, I'm quitting, I'm ending the series because I've had it up to here with some of these drop rates. That's it, baby. I, I knew it. I had a feeling. 
But we got the starlight. Alright, Golden Fist, you are out. I'm sorry. But I'm actually not going to use this as my main weapon. Well, I am. It's going to be my my first slot weapon, but I'm going to also have the Influx Waver because they serve two very different purposes. Basically, Starlight is good at this. It's like, that's what that's what Starlight's good for. The Influx Waver is good for single target damage. It's a lot riskier to use, but it does a whole lot better at close range. This thing is basically like using a yo-yo or a boomerang. Like, it's more used for the projectile than the actual sword itself, so... We're going to be using Starlight a whole lot. I'm going to be using it mainly against Old One's army, and probably for the Lunar events a lot as well. So let's get this in here. We need something real good for this. Legendary. That is beautiful. 15% all this stuff. This thing is an absolute beast of a weapon. But there's one thing we haven't done. Golem Fist, you're going away. There's one thing we have not, have not yet done, and that is deal with Old One's army. And when I say that, I'm mainly referring to the, um, to the Defender Medals. So we haven't actually exchanged them for the armors that we want. And that's the stuff we did a couple episodes ago. So we get our Defender Medals. We should have a whole lot of them. 230 right here. That should be enough to buy this right here. So I'm going to buy... Yeah, see, these cost a lot. This is 150. This is, um, 60. So that's why we got that. Ballista Staff. And this, um, I'm pretty sure goes with the Ballista Staff, these Val Valhalla, this Valhalla set. I think these all correspond to one of the different kinds. I'm gonna check though, just so I don't spend all my shit. Yeah, so this co Valhalla Knight, Knight stuff corresponds to the Ballista Staff. So we're gonna buy this right here. It's probably shimmerable, honestly. So if I even picked wrong, I could just throw it in the shimmer and it would give me something else. But... If we put on this stuff right here, how much defense does it have? 95, I go to. Holy shit! That is a lot of defense. Oh my god. 102. Okay, Jesus H. Alright. Well, we got that. I'm not gonna give it a beetle armor. That's gonna be better for, like, Moon Lord and stuff, but. Jesus, okay. Well, we'll put, we'll put beetle armor in there. Ballista staff we have right here. Defender medals. We probably will never need these again. But what we're going to do now is we're going to do Old One's Army. And Tier 3 is especially difficult, but with our fancy new stuff, I think we can do it. And if not, we have a lot of times of practice. Uh, we're not really wasting anything by doing it a lot of times, so here we go. Okay, so basically with this armor, this is like a summoning armor, but it affects sentries. So, I, I don't even have the crystals. But this um, greatly in enhances ballista effectiveness and increases max number of sentries and huge increase to summon damage. So... In past experiences, I have tried to do Old One's Army Tier 3, and let me tell you, it is very difficult. Um, and I think part of the reason that it is difficult is because I never really do much with sentries and stuff. I always just go in with, like, the weapons I have. I, I've used Starlight in the past, but I usually just go in with the weapons I have, and I just try and do it. But Old One's Army Tier 3 is a different beast. I think um, sentries are, very, are actually very essential for it. I don't know how, how many attempts this will take, so I'm just going to get a bunch. Um, I'm also not going to use buffs right away because I'd rather just go in and see how it goes first. But I was trying to say that you really need to utilize the summon things for this fight because if you just go in without preparation, like with using whatever you have, I don't think it works out very well because Betsy is very hard to kill and you also have to deal with everything else. So we're going to get started. We're going to see how this goes first of all. Got our Ballista Staves, which should be very effective, but this is tier 3, so this is no joke whatsoever. So, I'm gonna stick to, I'm gonna try and stick to Flareon and Starlight for this. I think those are gonna be some of the best options. But if we have no flying enemies, I'm just gonna use Starlight, because this thing is legendary. Look at how good this is. This is like the ultimate crowd control weapon. It even probably rivals like, um, Solar Eruption in terms of how much it does against crowds. Because, like, you can use it through walls, too, I'm pretty sure. So, it's, like, it hits literally everything. Okay, so right away, we have a bunch of stuff. So, we gotta be careful. These lightning bugs come in quick. So, we want to deal with those. And, as I've said before in the past, we want our sentries to focus on dealing with these guys, not the flying enemies. So, flying enemies should be our job. They should focus on all the other stuff. So, these ballistas should be doing heavy work against these guys. But, we do got these big guys here. They have 
7,650 health, so we gotta be careful. These ballistas will help a lot, but they're not gonna make it easy, so we gotta always be careful of what we're dealing with. Oh, we also have the wyvern. Shoot, I didn't realize that. So yeah, we should probably deal with that. Uh, North Pole and Flaron probably are good weapons to deal with this. Because I want to, I want them to home in on what we're doing. I don't want to have to worry about it ourselves. But that was a pretty quick wave nonetheless, so we're definitely doing well. Alright, we got the Dark Mage showing up in this wave. I'm going to try and stay back with the North Pole a little bit. I don't know how effective that's going to be, but it should be pretty good, honestly, in theory. In theory, it's good, but we'll have to see. Dark Mage has 10,000 health, so I'd like to deal with her pretty quickly. But I don't want to, I don't want to leave the crystal alone to do deal with her because these guys will sneak up and they will do a lot of damage. So actually, I think I got a good chance now. Uh, let's deal with her. Starlight should make relatively quick work of it. All right, get back, get back. Yeah, because these guys are going to ravage the crystal if we're not careful. These ballistas are excellent though. They're actually making a lot of difference. They are not flying specialists, so these flying things that are coming in, they're going to struggle with, but. Honestly, that should be what we deal with. I don't want them to have to deal with it. We've been through this enough. Okay, Ogu's coming in wave 5, so we gotta be very careful. I think it's better to stay back and be a bit safer here. Okay, Ogu's coming from the right side. So, let's try and stay back a little bit. Flaron should do very good work. I can definitely use the Starlight a bit. Like, this, no doubt, has the best DPS, so... Actually, I think we should stick to the Starlight. Because this is unparalleled. Flaron can't even do that. So it's going well so far, but I know how this whole game goes, and everything can change instantly. So, our health can drop, like, really quickly. We can get hit, like, three times, and it can all be over. So, we don't want to celebrate any any point. Alright, the next ogre's coming in. I'm going to try and deal with him right now, because I don't want him being a problem later on. Uh, the lightning bugs will definitely be annoying as well, but... I think we should really just focus this guy first, because he has 33 health. Oh, there's also Dark Mage. We want to deal with him first. Okay, that's good. Now deal with these guys. Make sure they're off the tower. There's also a... There's not only an Ogre, but a Dark Mage as well, so... I'm going to try and deal with the Dark Mage now. We should be just in reach of it, like this. Beautiful. And Ogre's gonna be difficult, but... Our Crystal is not taking a ton of damage, so... As long as we can deal with him, we should be good. Beautiful. But Betsy is in 15 seconds, and I'm extremely nervous about that. Because Betsy is no joke at all. So, we're gonna have to do our best. Hope these ballistas take care of him well enough. And Betsy will focus on us. So, here we go. I'm gonna try and use the Starlight. Alright, Betsy time. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Alright. Uh, I don't actually think... Is she even focusing on us? I don't think she is. She's focusing on the crystal. Okay, let's try and use North Pole a bit. Yeah, this is, this is doing very well. Very well, okay. Let's try and stick to North Pole. If we use it above the crystal, it should not only hit Betsy, but the other stuff below it. So, okay, let's... Our health is doing good. Let's try and use Starlight a bit. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, Starlight is making very quick work of this. I'm not po focusing on the crystal at all. I'm just going to try and take out Betsy herself. Yeah, uh, Ballistas are definitely taking care of things. If we keep this up... We are looking good right now, but as I said, do not celebrate too early. Betsy is, herself is not doing a ton of damage, but she has so much health, so that is what we have to be careful of. We are doing very, very well. We are almost done. Ballistas are absolutely keeping them off. These ballistas are a game changer. Have our health potion, and Betsy is almost down. This is actually going tremendously well. Come on, come on, come on. Starlight, finish it off. Come on, come on. So close, so close. And... Oh god, don't die. That, this would be really embarrassing to die now. Let's go. Oh my god, what do we get? We got the strike guy dragon fruit. Okay. This is one of the things we needed. Oh my god. I cannot believe we did that. If you asked me if we were going to do that first try, I would have said, like, 90% no. Wow, that was incredible. And we actually got one of the weapons we wanted, so... There's two weapons that Betsy drops, so our odds are in our favor. Um, one of these things has to go, though. I'm thinking the Eye of Cthulhu. I just... It's just the hardest to use out of these, and I don't see us getting a ton of use out of it. But we got the Sky Dragon's Fury, and that is very good. So, it does this little thing, if you're not sure. It does this little spinning animation, but it also does this. It fires out these little beams. 
so very very strong we're gonna want a good reforge for this duke fishron and empress oh i missed it i'm not worried about money at the very at this exact moment i keep missing godly I missed it again. Oh my god. I've spent like over six platinum on this. Okay. I'm not worried about money. I'm going slow. I don't care. There we go. Alright. We're done with that. We got Sky Dragon's Fury. That should be a big help. Because we're not done with Old One's Army. We still need the Flying Dragon. Which is like a sword. It's pretty much like Influx Waver but better. I would assume. So we're definitely going to want that. Athenia Crystals we're going to keep. We got all three of the um, trophies actually. Dark Mage we do not even have. Um, Ogre, did we have? I don't think we even had Ogre. So Ogre goes there. Betsy, we definitely did not have. That is going right at the top, because that was awesome. Now prepare for the rest of the video, where we grind through 20 Old Ones armies to get this one weapon drop. See, the Sky Dragon's Fury is very good at keeping these things off of the crystal. It's similar to the Electrosphere Launcher, but for melee. Like, this is very good at just, like, I think it damaged- it might stun them in place a little bit, I'm not sure. Another little hidden benefit is that it has quite a big range, so if we do stand here like this, for example, it not only will hit the enemies on the ground, but in the air as well, so that's one of the biggest benefits of it. Oh my god, these things really come out quick. We gotta... These lightning bugs are very dangerous, because they will do a lot of damage really quickly. Alright, War Table we just got from the Dark Mage is very good, because that allows us to have an extra sentry. I'm gonna put that up here, actually, if I can. Nope, can I? It's not letting me for some reason. Put it here, maybe? One of these days? Is it like, I don't know where the hell it is, but I guess we're not using it. Oh yeah, because we can't place things. Alright, round two with Betsy coming up. I don't know exactly what we did to do well last time, but I'm going to try and do it again. It seems like going very far away from the crystal is best, and trying to stand like right above it right here. So that way we can hit Betsy every time she goes past, and maybe even higher up actually, because she really, she really likes to stay low, I realized. So, if we can hit her in the stream of snowflakes, and stay close to the starlight, that's probably the best option. I feel like it's somehow not going as well as it did last time, so... Every time I try and leave the crystal alone, that happens, so... I'm just gonna stick with this. Hopefully, I can stall enough time to take Betsy out. I'm actually losing a decent amount of health, though. A bit more than I would've liked, so... I have 26 seconds left until my next health potion, so... I think we'll be okay, but... It's a little bit riskier this time around. Oh god, I might die, I might die. Okay, Betsy luckily does not go for me very much, so... Try and stay out of her way, and she's almost down. 3, 2, 1. Please, nice. Alright, Betsy's down, what do we get? Let me guess, not the Flying Dragon. Nope, but... We got, we got one of the two so far, so I'm happy with that. So now that Old One's Army Tier 3 is done, I believe... If I'm not wrong, that is everything we need to do for Melee Master Mode. In the entire game, up to Luna Events. And Luna Events, there's not really much choice. You, you get the solo option, the Daybreak, like, and then you fight Moon Lord. That's kind of just how it goes. Also, do we have the Brand of the Inferno previously? I don't think we did, actually. So yeah, that's a new weapon that we got. Uh, Influx Waver is going away, unfortunately. Um, everything else, pretty much for the last time, is going away. Which is a little sad, but... We are nearly at the end of the series. We have done everything we need to do. We have all this stuff. None of this matters anymore. Uh, we don't need these five crystals. It did take five Old Ones armies, I think. I don't actually remember. But it did not take that long. It was a lot less stressful than I thought it would be. And with that, I'm going to take back my beetle armor and put it back on. It is less defense, but overall, I think it's going to be more damaging in the long run. I mean, if we're really struggling against, like, Moon Lord or whatever, we can try this stuff. It's probably just as good. But just like that, I believe we are good to go for the- actually, no. We need to do one more thing. One last thing. We need to reforge our Flying Dragon right here. And we need to get some good on it. Legendary. Beautiful. That was a lot less painful than the Sky Dragon's Fury. But we pretty much- actually, no, not pretty much. We do have the best weapons possible. In melee master mode we have starlight flying dragon sky sky dragon's fury north pole which is the best spear flare on which is the best flare possessed hatchet which is, which is the best boomerang and we got tons of other stuff as well but i don't want to have like 20 weapons on me at all time it's like special special 
special shout out to like Influx Wave of Terrorblades, Go to the Crypto, um, the Eye of Cthulhu, a lot of stuff like this. We have all these things, most of which are pretty valuable, but we have our six lineup here that we're gonna use, and we're gonna go for Lunatic Cultist. We have done everything. We did Empress of Light Old Ones Army Tier 3, all that is left is the Lunar events. Now there's one thing, one possible thing that I could do for this, and that is to get the cell phone, because... I need the um, I need the angler stuff to make the cell phone because I have these three, but I never I never really get the angler stuff. But that's one thing I could theoretically do. But I think we can worry about that after Moon Lord. I think I will do a bit of stuff after Moon Lord just to kind of wrap things up. But for now, we don't really have to worry about that. I think we're just going to go with what we have. We're gonna take our potions and go take on Lunatic Cultist and begin the end game. We got a lot of potions that we never really ended up using. Some of the stuff is not really necessary. We can take these though, that, that that's nice to have. We have our best armor, our best accessories, and our best weapons. And just like that, we're about ready to head on over. So is this housing actually corrupted? So that, because that would explain why the pirate moved out. Yeah, so. This is corrupted right here. So the, the tunnel seemed to have worked. It didn't stop this house from being corrupted, but we can remove this little area right here, so we can remove whatever we need so that that house in particular is not corrupted. I don't know if that is actually enough space, but it seems like that should be good. If we go right here, um, it still does count as corruption. It's probably because this is just so close. Um, but we can take our Clentaminator. I think we do have some solution of it left. Oh uh, yeah, we have 26 solutions, so we can do that as a bit of a short-term, um, a bit of a short-term solution. So we can get rid of this stuff here, we can just go down the line like that, beautifully done, and that should just about hold it off for now. We will make, like, a bigger tunnel later on, but that frees it up for now. No longer corrupted, and the pirate can move back in right here. And here we go, the cultists are right here, ready for us to go. The Lunatic Cultist is not the hardest boss ever, so I don't believe- I think- I think the Lunatic Cultist got more health in the new update, but with all our crazy new weapons here, it should not be much of a problem. So let's kick things off, here we go. So 61,000 health is definitely new, that was more than before. So let's start things off with the Flying Dragon, let's just let's test it out, see how it goes. Use our buffs, obviously. And Flying Dragon should do some pretty good work. Um, it is important to make sure to dodge the cultist attacks because that's definitely the hardest part of the fight because all this stuff the cultist does is definitely the most damaging like it's not it's not the like the tankiest boss but if you don't dodge the attacks then that is going to screw you over more than anything since the cultist stands around a lot i think the flare on is probably a good option i mean i think any of my weapons would do fine but star starlight in particular would probably kill it pretty quickly oh god i need i need to go up i need to go up Kill it right there. Oh, that was so close. Right, let's try to use the North Pole a bit, rain down some stuff on him. That works pretty well. We could, we should probably just use the Starlight. That does the most damage for sure. But it is a lot risky. Starlight is very risky. Alright. Sky Dragon's Fury. We can use a bit. It doesn't really matter at this point, I don't think. It doesn't matter for this though. Kill him. Nope, that's the wrong one. God damn it. Okay. Sky Dragon's Fury should take out the dragon without much trouble. Alright, we don't want to mess this up again. There you go. So I'm going to stick to try and use the Flareon because the homing is, I think, what we really need here. Because we can dodge all this stuff alright, but we want to make sure we're actually hitting him and doing enough damage. We're nearly done with the fight, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, we can actually probably go into the Starlight at this point now. Um, we do use it for this part to find the fake, which is this one, is the real one. Almost done, only a couple thousand health to go, and three, two, one, there we go. Lunar events are incoming. We also got the relic, I think that's guaranteed actually, and the ancient manipulator, which is the most important part. I'm gonna put that right here for us, and with that, we are ready to head on to the lunar events. We got all of our stuff right here. Solar pillar is close, so I do wanna try and do the solar pillar now, if that's all at, at all possible. So then we can get the solar eruption and then daybreak and then we can figure out whatever else we need to after. So use the boundary right here for the solar pillar. Um, Truffle doesn't even live here anymore. I don't know why he doesn't. 
Um, it doesn't even show that he's here. I don't need. Is this even valid housing? Uh, it should be. I don't know why he doesn't live there. That's besides the point. This little arena we've got here should actually be a decent help for the solar pillar. Because, as we all know, the Qualtipede is an annoying bitch. And it will attack us if we even leave the ground. We gotta be very careful of that. Luckily, he has very low defense, so it shouldn't be that much of a trouble taking him out. I think North Pole, if anything, is probably a good choice for this. Because we can kind of just rain stuff down and not have to worry about a whole lot else. But this is master mode, which means it's going to be very annoying and we're going to die a lot. That's just kind of how the thing goes. That's how the Loon events go. You die a lot, and yeah. That's pretty much pretty much all you need to know about it. Yep, death number one. There we go. Wasting no time with it. Wouldn't hurt to have the Scotlix mount with us, just to like, just to add some extra attacking. Because I think we really need all the DPS we can get here. And we should probably stay on this platform, by the way. I know I said, I know I said that, like... 30 seconds ago and then I ended up not doing it but we're gonna die a lot and we if we can stay near our house so it's less time getting back I think that's probably the best thing we can do so Qualtipede should not be a worry to us as long as we stay on the ground we don't have to worry about him second we leave the ground though that's a problem so if we can stay right here fending these guys off um, that should be that should be alright one thing I'm worried about is I know one of these guys likes to reflect projectiles Oh god, oh yeah, Crawled P does not like that. But we're 50 down already, which is pretty good. Flying Dragon is doing excellent here, because not only does it have huge damage, but it pierces through literally everything we need to do, including the little solar flares that come off of the pillar. So this is working beautifully. Sky Dragon's Fury as well is very good at holding him back. Oh, I, what did I say, what did I say? Oh, we're only 6 left actually, which is not bad. I'm pretty sure they removed the 150 thing in expert mode, so you only have to kill 100. Uh, which I can respect... I mean, that wasn't the first thing I was asking for, but now I think about it, it's probably a good change. Alright, now we gotta deal with this thing quickly, quickly, quickly. Take it out, take it out. I don't wanna come back here, please. Heal the soul players. Okay, nice, nice, nice. We should be good. Get the, get the, get the fragments. Oh, god damn it, there's more. 3, 7, 2, 9. Um, 12, 14, 21. So we got 21 plus however many we got already. Pick up these bad boys right now. Got a little bit more to get. In total, we have 44 fragments, which is not bad. So, obviously, Solo Eruption and Daybreak are the two best weapons we can get now. Solo Eruption, uh, I don't know which is what's this kind of a place. I really want these three. I, I want to keep North Pole. I really don't want to get rid of North Pole. You know what, Possessed Hatcher, I'm sorry, but you're going to go. We're going to put Solo Eruption in the front and Daybreak in number two, like this. So, we're back to seven weapons, which is fine. But, unfortunately, Possessed Hatcher is going to have to go. Now we only have 8 fragments left, which is a little bit worrying because I think typically they gave more than that because we need to make some celestial sigils, sigils, I don't know what the hell they're called, but we need to do that to summon the moon lord more than once because we're probably going to die to him, so that's something we got to worry about. So these weapons are crazy, these are like end game weapons. Daybreak is going to be our weapon of choice against the moon lord, solo eruption is better for crowd control and stuff like that. So now that Solar Pillar is gone, we can reforge these bad boys. They're probably going to be expensive, but we're going to need the absolute best we can get. Godly as well, nice, okay. These two things right here are probably going to be our main weapons. Of course, everything else is still going to be useful, but we're probably going to use these two from here on out. But anyway, without any further ado, it is on to the Stardust Pillar. Luckily for us, there should be a... Well, I, there should be. There is a platform that we did for Empress of Light right up here which should actually be quite helpful for this boss. I mean, it's a little bit to the right, but I think stuff will still spawn right here. I don't know if I'm correct. Yeah, I am correct. So, we can chill right here, and we can do all the fighting we need to. Solo eruption hits through walls, and hits through pretty much everything you'll ever need to hit through. As long as we can avoid these beams, which... There's a lot more beams than I remember there being. I don't know why there's so many. God damn, leave me alone. There's too many things. I can't keep track. Get away from the... I know most people like to take advantage of the little star cell thing, but honestly, I don't have the I don't have the brain power to keep in track of like how many star cells are alive and how many I need to keep alive. I just kill whatever I see. I don't I don't use any like splitting mechanics to help me. I just I just I just kill. So I guess we could do this. The star cells are kind of just sitting there. We can kill them over and over again. And unfortunately, we have a little too many debuffs, so they're all kind of dying quickly. But we can do that, and that's all we need. I'm low on health, so I'm definitely going to die instantly. But come on, come on, come on. Starlight, finish it off. Don't take anything from anybody. Don't take anything from anybody. 
Deal with the stargazer. Be done with it. Come on. Don't take anything from anybody. Come on. So close. Oh, my health is so bad. Okay, we're fine. Just deal with these guys and we're good. Get all the fragments. Nice, nice, nice. 61. That is a lot. Now, these other two pillars are a lot further away. So, um, they're like pretty much... I mean, Nebula will be fine. Vortex is pretty far away from everything. So, I th I'm thinking... Which one is closer? Which... Which pylon is closer? Uh, I don't actually know. Um, snow pylon seems quicker, so I'm gonna go that way. But the nebula pylon is pretty close. Well, the nebula pillar is pretty close to the jungle pylon, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem getting over to that one. Alright, here we are, the vortex pillar. So, we're gonna do the same thing as we've done the past two times. I don't know as much about these enemies. Just to try to gauge what we're doing here, but... Okay, well, they're definitely kicking the shit out of me. That's... Oh, my God. Hey, we've only died, like, ten times. It's, like... It's honestly not as bad as it could be. I know it sounds sarcastic, but in the past, I have died a lot to the pillars. Like, a lot more than twelve times. I've... I've almost, like, just rage quit before trying to deal with the pillars. So, like, only dying, like, a, like a dozen or two times. Like, that that's not terrible. Like, in Master Mode, it doesn't matter what gear you have. Like, you're gonna die to the pillars a lot. That's just... That's just how it is. And you kind of have to come to terms with that at some point. I tried over and over, like, so many different strategies for dealing with the pillars. Like, having potions and, like, setting spawn points and doing all this crazy stuff. But, at the end of the day, I feel like what really works is just going in and out over and over again. Like, it's gonna suck, but you gotta do it. And that's just kind of how it is. See, it's kind of annoying because I have to deal with the corruption enemies at the same time as these guys. And these storm divers, I know they changed these storm divers. You didn't used to be like that, I know for a fact. These things used to be like really easy to take out, really stationary, but now they're like whipping all around the screen. Like, I know what you did. I think these guys are a little bit too strong. Oh, wait, hello. Spaghetti, hello. I didn't even. I. What? Wait, where did you come from? Were you always here? I don't remember seeing them. I was just kind of getting owned by the Vortex Pillar, and then I came back, and then I saw this guy. I don't know how he got here, but, you know, I, I, guess, I guess he's here now. Alright, that is it for the Vortex Pillar. Um, these guys have been actually the hardest so far, so I'm probably not even going to kill this thing. Yeah, they're 100% going to kill me before I do this. This pillar's been a pain in the ass, but this should be all we need. Solar Eruption, finish it off. Uh, somehow, don't think I'm going to die. I'm tired of dying to these guys. It won't happen anymore. Get these guys, get these guys. Alright, I'm done. See ya, see ya, see ya. Alright. So, we are done with everything except the Nebula Pillar. And that means we need to prepare. And to prepare, we need asphalt and a whole lot of campfires and heart lanterns. So as it turns out, we're actually out of both uh, life crystals and chains. So, chains should be easy to make. We can make a whole lot of them right here. There we go, that's plenty enough. But we are going to have to go on a search for some life crystals. Should be pretty easy. Um, so I'm gonna go do that right now. Alright, so I got five life crystals, that means I can make five heart lanterns. I think that should be enough, I mean, I don't know, if, if it's really not enough, we could go get more. We, we got a whole lot of stuff here, I don't care about any of this, we don't need to keep it. But, I think it's about time we start on our arena, so I'm gonna get some building potions, and we're gonna do that right now. I'm thinking right over here is probably the best place, I don't wanna build it too high. Uh, I also don't want to build it too low either. Honestly, this could be a good extension to it. Because this is in the hollow, and this is probably a pretty good height. I would like it to have- I would like for it to be a little bit higher, but... I think it wouldn't be an awful idea if we just used this. Yeah, see, we, we already have, like, a bunch of asphalt here, so... This would not only save us a lot of space, but... We could just build off of this. We don't have to, like, build up into the sky or anything. We could just- We could just keep going here, and we'd be fine. I don't know about you guys, but I think this is plenty of enough space. Like, if we look at the map, this is a long arena. I don't think, if we run, like, back and forth, I don't really think we're gonna need this much room. Oh well, we probably will need this much room, but we probably won't need any more room than this. Like, we're gonna be running for a lot of the fight, but 
we don't really need to turn around a whole lot here. So I think that's kind of the key. If we can keep running in one direction for as long as possible. Um, it doesn't appear that... Yeah, see, that is that is just one line straight of me running, not even turning around. I'll, I'll add like a little bit more, but I don't want to overdo it, honestly, because I don't think all this is completely necessary. So let's be done there. And let's just put some campfires, some torches, and some hot lanterns. And we should be good to go. Alright, that should just about do it. We have one more campfire which we'll put on the end here. I don't have one more heart lantern, but it's not the end of the world. And there is our Moon Lord Arena. All we need to do is take on the Nebula Pillar and then get prepared and then we should be good to go. Also, sorry if my voice doesn't sound very, like, energetic. I'm usually, like, I usually sound better than this, but I really wanted to get this video done and I really wanted to get this video done and I just got sick today, so... I didn't really plan on it being this way, so sorry about that, but hopefully I should be better in the next couple of days when we get started with the ranged playthrough. So we're going to take absolutely everything for the Moon Lord, everything that we should possibly need. Um, some of the stuff is not necessary, but some things just in case we'll bring because we have them. Um, iron skin, regeneration, endurance, all this stuff we are going to use against the Moon Lord. going to pull out all the stops um, just to make sure that we are absolutely prepared. If there's a couple things we don't have, swiftness potion I would like to make. I think for that we need like cacti or something, which I should have somewhat. Yeah, I have cacti here. I believe that's the only thing we need for that. Um, I could just be wrong too, but no, we got that. And the other thing I want to get is some um, wrath potions. And those are things I had quite a lot of in the beginning, but I kind of ran out of them pretty quickly. So all we need to do is go fishing in the corruption for that. And that should be all we need. Alright, our arena is done. I think we got all the buffs we need. I'm gonna go all out on this one. Um, got all the stuff we need. Accessories. I decided to switch out for the Valhalla armor set. Because it does increase my armor. And honestly, for this fight, I'm gonna prioritize staying alive than doing damage. If I if I do a lot of damage, but I like die in one hit, then I feel like it's not really worth it. So, I got everything I need. We're gonna go take on this last pillar. And then, we're gonna be done. This pillar, of course, being one of the most annoying ones, so th this is going to be an annoying process, this one in particular, especially these little floating guys, but I think if we just keep circling around, we use something at range like Sky Dragon's Fury, we should be good. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about this one, and if we die a bunch, then we can just come back. It's pretty close to the jungle pylon, so it should not take that much time. Halfway done, guys. We are so close. We are so close to being done, just a little bit longer. A little bit more to go. Gotta take out these guys. One, literally one more. Okay, here we go. Nebula pillar is about to go down. I might die, but we can just come right back if we do die. And as always, if we die to the Moon Lord, we can just make the Celestial Sigil and we can be right back. All right, got these things. All right, we don't, we don't, we don't need, we don't need all of them. But what we do need to be is ready on our arena. So we're gonna have all of our stuff ready to go, and we're gonna try our best. That's that's all we can do. So here we go, um, I got my stuff here, I believe I can make super healing potions, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, I don't know how to make them, okay, let's just, let's just go, let's just go, no time to waste, uh, have a healing potion now, got all of our stuff ready to go, uh, we, we either, we either lose or we win, that's all we can try, do our best, and we'll see what happens. I'm not super confident in the Moon Lord, but I have all this stuff prepared. I got really good, like, reforges and everything, so I'm feeling confident. But it is also, we're about to lose our Celestial Shell buffs, which is unfortunate, but it's alright. I think we'll be okay. So here we go, buff up, Godly Daybreak, ready to go. Alright. So, with the Moon Lord, we want to try to dodge. We want to try and take down the eyes first, but of course, when the head is exposed, that is what we should definitely go for. So, they're definitely going to shoot a lot of projectiles out. We've got to be very careful, but we should be alright. Dodge the beam. That is the most important thing, in my opinion. Dodge the beam, cycle around it, and then just keep running away. Dodge around like that. Beautifully done. Going well so far. Not too bad. But see, we can... Any of this can change just instantly. Now, my favorite thing about the Valhalla set is that it gives us 103 defense. So, I think that is really going to be the game changer here. High defense, I think, is the best thing we can have. As opposed to high damage, 
which I think is also very good, but... Ooh, God, I didn't see that. I think high damage is also very important, but we need to stay alive above all else, so... Taking out the eye while we can is the best bet, because it's not open all the time. So, as much damage as we can get on it as we can, that is perfect. I'm gonna try and loop around, do some other damage to the second, the second hand, because I want to try and take these out at the same time. So, if that's, if that's something we can do, then that would be great. Uh, we really need to focus this head, though. That's, that's probably my main concern right now. We might actually wait, we might actually hold off on damaging the hands first, because I want to try and activate all these at the same time. Because if we can synchronize the true eyes of Cthulhu, then that's probably the best thing we can do. I know I'm saying a lot of things, that that's apparently the best to do, but there's a lot of good things you can do for this fight. It's, it's very easy to just jump in and not be prepared. Okay, head should be down in a few seconds here. I want to try and take all these down really quickly. Okay, this hand maybe is gone. Okay, this eye isn't even gone yet. That is gone. There we go. And this should be gone in just a second here. So these two eyes of Cthulhu are very dangerous, so we want to stay away from them. I'm going to keep trying and attack the core, because if we can stay away from these true eyes, then they're not going to be able to use their tricks on us. And that beam is the most damaging thing. Like that, we need to stay away from that. So, I know we can't hit them, but we need to really stay away from that, because that's the most damaging thing they have. So if we can just keep, keep on trying to hit the core, I know we're not always going to hit it, but... We really need to keep our distance. That is the biggest thing we can do. So if we can possibly do like this, stay just out of its reach where we can see it, that is beautiful. See, you can see at the bottom, his health is dripping down. Uh, I want it to stay above the asphalt so the core doesn't dip below it. But right here is probably where it is. Maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, there we go. So if you can see the damage he's taking, you can see where you need to be aiming. So like right here is pretty good. Where you see his health start to drop more is where you need to be aiming. And of course he does heal over time, so we gotta try and do this quickly. I'm trying to loop around right now, try and dodge the beams. We're gonna get hit by a couple things, but that's okay. The core is taking some damage, but you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. If we try and run in and be risky, that's the worst thing we can do for ourselves. So we just gotta stay out of its reach like this. This is beautiful. This is exactly how we win right here. And I don't want to say anything, but it looks like it is going pretty well. I think we are nearly there. 10,000 health to go. And we are finally done. 3, 2, 1. Finish off the starlight. Yes, let's go. We did it, baby. Moon Lord is down. I am surprised that went as well as it did. I think I played that very well. Let's go. Moon Lord is down. We got the Peace Moon Squid. We got the Moon Lord Relic. And we got the Meow Meow. Oh my gosh. That is lucky. Can put on the celestial starboard gravity globe uh we don't really need that but it's it's nice to have but we got the meow meow and i think that kind of replace one of these things um i think i don't know north pole north pole has been good enough to us it can stay actually not all these things can stay oh my goodness okay that went pretty damn well that was very good we did it we beat noon lord on this amazing journey and you know what? I'm even tempted to go for it again. We got some Luminite bars we can make. I don't think it's enough to do anything, but let's see. Uh, we can make a bit of stuff. We do need some solar fragments. So let's try and make some of them. How much do these cost? These are like 8 Luminite, 16 Luminite. I don't know. I think that would actually be good to make. But above all else, I want to make Celestial Sigil. I don't actually think I can make that right now. So we might have to go through the Luna events again, that's okay. Um, I'm pretty sure there's nothing better we can make. So I'm gonna make two of these pieces right now. Solar Helmet and Solar Breastplate. That is a lot of defense, 117 defense. And we're getting huge melee buffs. Like, we got the Meow Meow now. This should honestly take care of most of it by itself. And that is pretty much it. I'm going to do a little bit more grinding just to get the full solo outfit and some of the tools and stuff. But other than that, we did the Moon Lord. We did everything we can do. We got some of the best stuff we can get. And I'm really proud of what we did. Uh, here we go. We're going in for round two. We've got pretty much everything we need. I think we got all the fragments there. We got a whole bunch of new stuff right here. And I think we're ready to go for round two. So I'm a I feel a lot more confident than last time. I'm still gonna drink a whole bunch of this stuff, 
you know, just in case. I don't want to be embarrassed and actually end up dying here, so. Wrath Potion, why the hell not? And we've got Super Healing Potions this time. I've got the Soaring Insignia. I should probably use the Master Ninja Gear for this still. But we've got the Meow Meow now. Actually, I should reforge this before anything else. I know I'm kind of cutting it close here, but, uh... I really want to get a better modifier on this guy. And at the end of the day, we got some really busted stuff, so it's not the absolute end of the world if we get caught somewhere where we shouldn't be. Godly, nice. Well played. Alright, get to the hollow as quick as possible. And I'm going to dig in right here, as we usually do. And we're ready to go for round two. Alright, I'm going to try out the Meow Meow. The Meow Meow should be pretty damn good at this. Uh, should take this stuff out pretty quickly, honestly. Gotta use my Cursed Flames. But yeah, this is this is making good work of him. I'm actually gonna go up here like this. See how this works? Yeah, that is doing good damage. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Yeah, that's probably why, why we should be careful. This is still Moon Lord. We can still die very easily. Alright, come on. Give me the core. Give me the core. Do this. Oh god, I don't want to die. But I also am so close. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Maybe. Let's be careful. We, we can still definitely die. I literally just should have learned this lesson. Okay, there we go. Moon Lord down for the second time in one episode without any death. <coughs> what are you gonna give me this time? Give me something good. Uh, if I could get this shit out. Oh, Terrarian, let's go! We got the Terrarian. This is going very well, actually, and the Meow Meow Minecart. I don't know if that's better or not, but I think it might as well be. Um, but we can now make the rest of our Illuminate bars with all this stuff he has given us. And, um, don't care about that. We can make the solar flare leggings, right? I think that's what we need. Yep, there we go. 112 defense. We've got everything we need. We have our dash now so we can put on the sewing insignia. All this stuff can go away. We don't care about this anymore. We do no longer need it. Uh, Mash Ninja Gear can go away. Shiny Stone. Uh, we gotta put it in here manually. Shiny Stone can go away. Of course, now using the Celestial Sigil actually allows it to skip most of the animation. That's a little bit quicker than I anticipated. But luckily, we have the Sewing Insignia and the Celestial Starboard, so we can basically move at light speed. And we also have the Tuarian, which should make this pretty damn easy. Actually, with the Yo-Yo Bag, this would probably be even easier. I don't know if we want to swap that out for something, maybe? We can swap it out for the Fire Gauntlet, like this. Here we go. We got this crazy damage right here. I want to see how quickly this takes them out. And of course, we can fly infinitely, so there's not even any need for the asphalt bridge anymore. And we have so much defense, we barely take any damage. This is beautiful. Look at that, no problem. We could probably take out the IOU right now. No worries, absolutely nothing to be worried about. Not close to dying whatsoever. Oh, 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 I almost died. Oh, my God. Yeah, we got the Star Wrath. Nice. All right, and that, I believe, is it, ladies and gentlemen. I think we've got everything that we need. We actually got another Meow Meow as well. And, if I'm not wrong, if we combine some stuff, do I have everything I need? I definitely don't have everything I need. So, I think there's a couple more things we need to get, but you know what comes next. Alright guys, this is a many days later after a previous recording, but Enchanted Sword is mine. And with that, I'm heading back to my original world right here. Um, because I believe we have everything we need to make the Zenith. And that is the last thing we need to do in this series. Because it wouldn't be complete without doing this. So, as you can tell, my voice is very bad. Um, I'm still pretty sick, but I decided I really wanted to get this video out. So, I'm getting everything we need uh, I think this is it from this section we need all the swords we've gotten over the years um, I don't actually know everything what we need beekeeper we need um, terror blade I think this is about it I think one more thing we do need is copper short sword is that even enough copper to make it oh that's not even enough copper we can make the copper short sword I don't know if that's everything we need but not the copper bow Cop short sword right here and the zenith beautiful we did it guys 100% zenith is done we got all the best stuff we could possibly get and to send off this series we're gonna go for the moon load one last time with absolutely everything that we can get and we're gonna take him out 
Furious guys, and this should be pretty quick. Zenith should make pretty good work of this. I don't even have the best modifiers. I don't even have any reforges for this thing, but guys, this series was a ton of fun to do, and I know I'm not in the best shape right now, but I really wanted to get this out because it's been a lot of days since I did the last episode of this, and I really didn't want to have you guys wait anymore. Oh god, I'm actually going to die. I gotta be careful, actually. I really didn't want, want to have you guys wait any longer, because I know a lot of people were enjoying this series, so I wanted to get out as quick as possible, and I think we just about got there. Um, just a few more seconds, this guy should be taken down. And we have done pretty much everything we can do in Master Mode Melee. So I didn't get every weapon, I didn't get everything that I possibly could have, but we could spend like 10 more episodes getting like everything we can possibly get, getting all the new stuff, getting every single weapon, but I feel like we really want to move on, and we got another Star Wrath. I feel like we really want to move on to the next series, which is the ranged playthrough. I've been really looking forward to this one, there's a lot of new stuff I want to try, so again, one more time, sorry that my voice sounds like this, I'm still really sick. But, I appreciate you guys sticking with me through this whole series. We got pretty much everything. I'm going to get a good reforge on this, and then we're going to head off. Use every last bit of money we have. Get the absolute best modifier we can get. <coughs> there we go. There we go. Legendary Zenith. We got the best weapon we can possibly get. The best weapon in the game. All the best stuff. And, I think with that, we are about done. So... Thank you guys so much for watching this series. It was a ton of fun to do. I didn't expect nearly as many people to watch it and enjoy it as they did, but I appreciate every single one of you. As always, I don't ask you guys to like or subscribe. I just ask you to enjoy the video. You can like and subscribe if you want. I don't need you guys to, but just, just clicking on this video and watching a little bit of it is enough for me. Um, next video, we're going to head on to the ranged series. It's going to be 1.4.4 ranged master mode, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you guys are. But with that, Swordman is complete. We did it. And thank you for watching. This was the Enchanted uh, Sword Sea. We don't need that anymore. Thank you guys for watching. And I will see you in the next video.